Okay, so to continue our coverage over Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers, we actually pick up with Avengers number 37. Now, this book right here, it literally picks up where our last video left off at. Now, with that being said, we actually pick up with S.H.I.E.L.D. right now going into Rome. Now, the reason why they're going into Rome because they found the hidden base of the Illuminati. Because remember, right now at this point, the Illuminati are on the run because Steve Rogers remembers that he was part of the Illuminati and he was part of the team that was trying to deal with the incursions. But because Steve Rogers did not want to blow up Earth from other universes, the Illuminati basically kicked him out and made him forget everything. But later on, he remembered everything. And so he's angry because he knows the Illuminati have blown up other Earths from different universes. Now, with all that being said, at the end of our last video, Black Panther had no choice but to teleport from Wakanda over to Rome because Wakanda failed to the Black Order. Now, here comes the big problem though. With Black Panther basically teleporting over to Rome, S.H.I.E.L.D. was able to detect that energy they used to teleport. And so that is why now you have S.H.I.E.L.D., Steve Rogers, and the Avengers getting ready to attack the hidden base of the Illuminati in Rome to finally bring them in. But here comes the big problem. They send Hawkeye in first. But when Hawkeye gets inside, he tells Steve Rogers they are too late. That apparently the Illuminati were able to get away once again. But apparently they left something just for Steve Rogers. And that is the moment you have Steve Rogers walk in. They look around. They realize that this place is empty. That the Illuminati were able to get away very quickly. But like I said earlier, Hawkeye told Steve Rogers they had apparently left something just for him. And that something is a hologram message with Beast and Hulk playing chess. Which I find very funny. But of course, there is a hidden message in this hologram. With them playing chess, it's basically Beast and Hulk and the rest of the Illuminati saying, we're playing a game. It's you against us. We're making moves, you're making moves. You're trying to bring us in, we're trying to save the multiverse. It's us playing a game of chess, trying to make the right moves so that we can win this game of ours that we're playing in right now. But there is more to this message. And the rest of the message is Beast kind of saying how humans think. That humans want to feel special. That humans try their best to find something about themselves to feel special. But of course, a lot of times, most humans are not that special. Now, this is also Beast telling Steve Rogers, if you want to win this game, you need to get better. You need to think better, get smarter, move better. Because right now, we're like two steps ahead of you. There's no way you'll be able to finally bring us in. And so with that, that makes Steve Rogers so angry. Because in our last couple of videos, he's getting tired of people just basically saying, hey, Steve, you're just not smart enough to stop us. You're not smart enough to understand the science behind anything. And so it's Steve Rogers kind of like, I'm pissed and I want to bring them in and I'm going to bring them in. Now, if you're wondering why Steve Rogers is old at this point, but he wasn't earlier in our run of Jonathan Hickman, because by that point up to this point, he lost the super soldier serum. And so he just grew old and that is it. But he also is the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now we do pick up later on in the day where we see Steve Rogers right now watching an old recording of the United Nations having a meeting. Of course, that means all the different countries across the world coming together. Now, this right here is very huge. And the reason why I say that is because 
It's the world finding out about the incursions, about how there's two Earths from different universes crashing into one another and right now the multiverse is basically dying because when those two Earths crash into one another, both universes die and this is happening all over the multiverse. And so with that, you have a lot of countries kind of like finding out, but also these countries are really kind of falling in line with what the Cabal is doing. Now remember, the Cabal is a group of bad guys that Namor put together, Black Swan, Thanos, the Black Order. It's all of them coming together and they're going around the multiverse and killing off Earths that could possibly crash into the main Marvel Universe Earth. And so with that being said, you have almost all these different countries kind of buying in what the Cabal is doing, but also worried and wondering what is S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers actually doing. Because right now, the Illuminati have made the world kind of look at S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers like, we trusted you. We trusted you to tell us what's going on in the world, or in the universe, or in the multiverse, and you hid this from us. And so right now, it's all the countries and the Cabal together against the Avengers and the Illuminati. And that right there is very huge. Now, you do have Carol Danvers walk in, AKA Captain Marvel. Now, when she walks in, of course she tells Steve Rogers an update. Now, this update is really Steve Rogers learning everything that had happened so far in the last couple videos we have done. But at the same time, this is Jonathan Hickman kind of giving people a review on what has happened so far in the last couple storylines, just in case you skip those last couple books. But with that being said, of course, it's also Carol Danvers and Steve Rogers trying to figure out who can they go after? Who can they attack in the Illuminati first, to bring in first, to hopefully weak the Illuminati? Of course, Captain Britain is off the board. Beast is also off the board. Now, the reason why Beast is off the board is because he's protected by the X-Men. Because at this point, they have their own nation on the island off California. And the same for Captain Britain. He's basically protected by Britain. And so with that, they're trying to find different angles where they can attack the Illuminati. Now, you also have Carol Danvers tell Steve Rogers that Sunspot in our last video, or actually two videos ago, has bought Advanced Idea Mechanics. And so other people are making moves. And of course, there was another incursion, but it was handled. Now, we have no idea how it was handled, but most likely it was the Cabal. And so this is Steve Rogers just getting angry because it seems like every step he takes, the Illuminati takes like four or five more steps. They're always ahead of him. Now, the big surprise of this video or this chapter of this video actually comes when you have Reed Richards meeting up with Susan Storm. Now, the reason why I say that is very huge is because, remember, in our last couple of videos, it seems like Susan Storm was working with Steve Rogers. She was so determined to bring in her husband, to bring in the rest of the Illuminati because of what they have done. They have gone around blowing up other Earths and other universes. But in reality, she's kind of like, no, I'm on my husband's side. I'm a double agent. Everything you tell me, Steve Rogers, I'm going to feed to my husband. And so with that, it's her being a double agent. And Steve Rogers and no one else has an idea that she is a double agent. Now, the reason why they're meeting up is because one, they have not seen each other in a long period of time. But at the same time, it's Susan Storm giving Reed a message. And this message comes from his daughter, his daughter Val. And on that message, it says, you can't win, Dad. Time to start figuring out how not to lose. And that is where this book ends. But this video is not done yet. Now, to continue this video, we actually pick up with New Avengers number 26. Now, 
we actually pick up in Wakanda. Now, this is huge. Because remember, Wakanda is gone. Wakanda has fallen. The Black Order had completely wiped that out. But there is still one location, one hidden location in Wakanda. And that was the prison that the Illuminati had made. But we do see two people crash landing into Wakanda. And we have no idea who they are just yet. But then we jump inside the prison of the Illuminati and we actually pick up with the Black Swan. Now remember, the Black Swan is not from this universe. Matter of fact, she is from a different universe, but she was the one who basically taught our heroes, the Illuminati, about the death of the multiverse, the Black Priest, and almost everything else about the death of the multiverse, including the map makers. Everything the Illuminati knows came from her, but she always said, this is going to break you guys. I have patience. I have been doing this for a long period of time. But with that being said, I have patience and you don't. And I always told you, you were going to break. And you're wondering who she is talking to. And that is the moment we come to find out she is talking to Tony Stark. Now, this is huge because remember, for the last couple videos, Tony Stark has been missing. The Illuminati has been saying that. The Avengers have been saying that. No one knew what happened to him. And now we know what. He was captured by the Cabal. He was locked away in this prison. But then we jump over to Latveria. Of course, the home of Doctor Doom. Now, this is very important because... At this moment in Marvel Comics, it seems like Doctor Doom and Reed have some kind of truce. But at the same time, Doctor Doom apparently has some kind of bond with Valerie Richards. Now, of course, this is Doctor Doom checking up on her, but also wanting to know what her father knows. Which, of course, he already knows. Meaning that he wants to make sure that there is nothing Reed knows that he doesn't know. But of course, they both know the same thing. Now, with them both knowing the same thing, and Valerie knows that Dr. Doom knows everything about the incursions, like her father, is Valerie telling Dr. Doom, you can't win. Like I told my father, you can't win at all. It's the same message she told her father in the earlier chapter of this video. But then we see Dr. Doom go to a different part of his castle, where of course we come to find out and get reminded that he is still holding the Molecule Man. Now this is very huge because when it comes to the Molecule Man, he has the ability to warp reality down to a molecule. That is very, very powerful. Now with all that being said, it's Dr. Doom telling us that the Molecule Man could play a very important role. Now, we have no idea what that role is, but it could be very important down the road. But then you have the molecule say, uh, molecule say, you have the molecule man say something very important. And what he says is this right here. He says he's having a hard time dreaming and hard time thinking. And he keeps saying the same thing over and over again. And the reason why, is because there are less of him now across the multiverse, meaning that there could be a connection between all the different Molecule Mans and the different universes in the multiverse, but with the death of the multiverse happening and some of them being wiped out, there are less of them, he's having a hard time thinking straight because they used to have more of them like a hive mind. But of course, that'll be explained in a later video. But getting back over to Wakanda, we actually pick up with two members of the Black Order. Now, these two members are actually part of the Cabal, the same Cabal that Namor put together, Proximus Midnight and her husband, uh, Corvus Glaze. Now, with that being said, this moment is really more of Corvus Glaze telling us that Thanos is beginning to realize something about the death of the multiverse. And apparently he does have a lot of concerns. But the problem is, 
we don't get the chance to learn about those concerns because you have Corvus Glaive realize or he thinks he realized that there's someone else in the room with him. Of course, he does send a blast out in a direction to hopefully kill off the intruders, but when he misses, he's kind of like, maybe I was wrong. Maybe no one is in here with us. And so they walk away. But in reality, there were. The same two people we saw who crash landed in Wakanda earlier in this chapter. Now, we actually do jump back over to the conversation between Black Swan and Tony Stark. Now, this conversation at first is honestly a joke. And what I mean is that you do have the Black Swan continue on to say that Tony Stark is broken, that she warned him that this will break him, that these kind of things are not normal for a regular human being to go through. But while she's saying those things, you have Tony Stark actually stop her and say, hey, I know your secret. And she's like, wait, what secret? And he says, I know you're in love with me. All those times you kept talking to me and basically saying we're all going to die and there's no way out how I'm going to be broken. Being trapped in here told me one thing that you're basically in love with me. And she's kind of like, dude, really? You're getting that? Out of everything I've done to you and what we have gone through that you think I possibly love you, you're crazy. But on top of that, that is the moment you have Tony Stark say, I know why you're here because you're looking for a universe that could possibly not die. But you're not going to stop there because once you find that universe, then your plan is to bring the loved ones you lost back to life. That is what you're looking for. And then she says, okay, since you know me, what are you? A man who is broken. A man who has tried to see the future so many times or prepare for the future so many times. But you have failed as well. And so it's both of them kind of like realizing more about each other at this moment. But then we learn, how did Tony Stark end up here in this prison? Because apparently, Tony Stark actually tried to stop the Cabal. Now, we don't know where, but apparently he did try to stop them. And he tried to use a new kind of armor that he made. Now, when he tried, of course, he basically failed. We all know he failed because he's locked up right now in the prison. But of course, that is why no one knows what happened to him. Because he just went out there with his brand new armor, got his butt whooped and brought to this prison. But this is the Black Swan basically saying goodbye to Tony Stark. That she realized who he is and hopefully he realized who he is and she's done. And so she walks away. Now, after the Black Swan leaves, we do learn who were those two characters that had crash landed in Wakanda. And those two characters are Spider-Woman and Natasha, aka Black Widow. Now, you would think that they are here to kind of free Tony Stark. But in reality, they're kind of here to tell him no one is coming here to help him. And no one's coming here to break him out. And the reason why I say that is because it's Spider-Woman and Black Widow saying the world is better off without you. Now, if you're wondering how these two characters know where Tony Stark were, but no one else could figure out where he was, well, they said that apparently Tony Stark and Steve Rogers had one more meeting. One last meeting to hopefully end things between the Avengers and the Illuminati. But something happened. And with that something happened, that meeting did not go as planned. But apparently, it was Black Widow and Spider-Woman saying they were able to follow the story. Follow the story long enough to realize, hey, I think I know where Tony Stark is at. He's locked up in that prison in Wakanda. And so, of course, they came here. Now, again, like I said, at first, it seems like they were coming here to free him. But in reality, they're coming here to say, you were wrong. You were wrong for what you did. You were wrong for not telling us. And also, you are too dangerous for the world right now. If we let you out, more bad things could possibly happen. 
And so this is Black Widow and Spider-Woman just walking away, not letting him free. And of course, he's angry because he believes that he knows how to stop everything. He always is prepared for the future. But of course, he never always is because there is always something that could end up surprising you like this right here. But either way, this is Black Widow and Spider-Woman walking away. And this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions on books I should read, well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. Later, guys.